Hi there, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, here at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex to teach you guys a little bit about the basics of rocket vocabulary. We're literally just going to teach you the difference between a rocket and the payload it's carrying, and what a capsule looks like, and what a space shuttle is. It's really not as complicated as it sounds, I promise. Check this out. Three, two, one, zero, and Welcome to this episode of A Beginner's Guide to Rocket Vocabulary. Now, if you want to learn about rockets or spaceflight, but you don't even know where to begin, well, guess what? You just found it. So first things first, let's define two things. There's the launch vehicle and its payload. Or you might also hear someone say a rocket and a spacecraft. Same thing. The launch vehicle, or rocket, is just the thing that takes something to space. Think of it as a delivery truck. It has one job, to get its payload up into space. Now, it might be somewhere close, like low Earth orbit, or it might be something really far away, like Mars or Saturn. Altogether, there's been a ton of rockets, but here's a quick list of some of the more famous rockets throughout history. There's the grandfather of modern rockets, the V-2. Then there's the Redstone, the Atlas, the Titan, the Space Shuttle, the Saturn V, the Soyuz, the Delta, and the Falcon 9. Woo! So why are there so many different rockets? It comes down to which rocket is right for the job. Quite simply put, the bigger the rocket, the bigger the payload can be. But you don't want to buy the wrong rocket for the job. There's many considerations that come into play, including price, performance, and reliability. Okay, rockets, check. Now for the thing that goes on top of the rocket, the payload, or spacecraft. A spacecraft is defined as a vehicle designed to fly in outer space. This could be a communication satellite, or an Earth observation satellite, or a cargo vessel, or a crewed, not crewed, vehicle. To make this easy, let's take a look at crewed spacecrafts from history. Spoiler alert, there's only about seven-ish vehicles that have ever taken people to space, and four of those have come from the United States. Let's take a closer look at those four to see how easy it is to understand the entire history of the United States' human spaceflight program. In 1961, we started flying astronauts aboard the Mercury capsule, which was the first vehicle to launch a United States astronaut to space, and could only carry one astronaut at a time. There were only six Mercury capsules flown with an astronaut on board, with the last flight being in 1963. In 1965, we started flying astronauts aboard the Gemini capsule, which could carry two astronauts to space at a time. There would be a total of 10 Gemini capsules that would fly with humans on board, with the last flight in 1966. In 1968, we started flying astronauts aboard the famous Apollo capsule, which could carry three astronauts to space at a time. The Apollo capsule is what took humans to the moon, so it's pretty awesome. There were a total of 15 Apollo capsules that would fly with humans on board, with the last flight in 1975. Lastly, in 1981, we started flying astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle. The iconic Space Shuttle could carry up to eight astronauts and is perhaps the most confusing rocket to define. First, its official program name was the Space Transportation System, which you may often hear referred to as STS, followed by the mission number. And don't even get me started on those confusing mission numbers. The next item of confusion is what a Space Shuttle actually is. Well, the Space Shuttle is actually composed of three main things, the orbiter, the external fuel tank, and the solid rocket boosters. So in this case, this entire thing is the rocket, while just the orbiter is the spacecraft. Okay, well anyway, the Space Shuttle stopped flying in 2011 after 135 missions, and is currently, as of the making of this video, the last vehicle to ever have flown astronauts from the United States. But that's about to change soon. So that's it! Those are the only vehicles to ever launch astronauts to space from the United States. Pretty easy, huh? Currently, there's two or three satellites launched into space on any given week by various countries, but there's only a handful of crew launches per year. So to summarize, there's rockets and there's the payload. So you might see a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launching a Dragon capsule, or perhaps a communication satellite. Or you might see United Launch Alliance launch their Atlas V rocket with a Cygnus capsule resupplying the International Space Station, or perhaps a military satellite. Okay, let's pop back to Kennedy Space Center and see some more examples. So behind me is the rocket garden here at Kennedy Space Center. Rocket garden, someone should take a picture gardening in the rocket garden. <laughs> so here we have the Redstone rocket with a Mercury capsule on top, and over here we have an Atlas rocket with a Mercury capsule on top. Here we see a Titan rocket with a Gemini capsule on top as its payload. Over here is a Saturn 1B rocket with the Apollo capsule as its payload. Now behind me is the beloved Space Shuttle Orbiter. 
Now notice I just said orbiter and not space shuttle. This is the business end of a Saturn V rocket. This is a Titan rocket. These are Atlas rockets. If you ever need someone to tell you what rockets are, that's this guy. That's me, Mr. Rocket Guy. What's I, the rocket? It's a Juno. And this is a Saturn 1B. I went for a little jog. Why did I do that? Okay, enough goofing around. I like how half the time I was wearing a spacesuit and half the time I wasn't with no explanation. Talk about continuity errors. Make sure and subscribe so you know when I continue a beginner's guide to rocket vocabulary. If you have questions about today's video or ideas for future videos, make sure and leave those in the comments below. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters for helping make this video and that road trip down to Florida possible. If you want to help support this show, please visit patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Thank you. And lastly, a big thank you to Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex for letting me run around like a goofball all day. Seriously, thank you. Well, that does it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.